ladies, and welcome to this week's Extreme Business Set Mind series <laughs> with amazing Lee Tony Ware and, of course, myself, Paul Reese, here in Wales. Although we're in different countries, we're all experiencing Mother Nature at their very best today, which is blowing everything left, right, center, inside out, up and down, but also blowing the cobwebs from how we think, feel and generate in our own lives. And that's why we're here today. We're going to experience our own tornado called Lee Tannyware, and he's going to take you to the eye of the storm. And the eye of the storm is where you live in yourself. And you know what? Well, I say we have some amazing, some amazing um, nuggets, concepts, and everything that we talk about you. And again, all you were listening, because today is going to be a, a power one today. We've got about a 20 minute, 25 minute gap here, because Lee has got a massively full day. Very generous. Lee, thank you for your time. Remember, subscribe, like, and all those beautiful things. And what are we doing? And listen, we have an unstable connection today. That's Mother Nature are in at her best today so we may drop in and out but you know what fill in the gaps yourself people because if you do then you're falling in line with what lee is offering if you fill in the gaps you're in alignment with this conversation today and what are we talking about today here it is do you listen to you before you listen to others and let me just touch on that when you say do you listen to you are you listening to your drama are you listening? Are you listening to you yourself intellectually? Are you listening from the heart of your belief? No, not belief, the heart of your own inner strength. You know, so many people become addicted to listening instead of listening to them to listen to other people. We become addicted to, to information. And also, I'm going to say this, we become addicted to listen to information we're not ready for. We'll go into we'll go into workshops, we'll go into events, you know, and yes, while it's important to grow, to listen to information that grows you, but don't go into an event listening when you're not ready to listen for that also. We go in and we flex our ego, think, you know, oh, it's great to hear all that, but how many of us listen to information and actually just set it aside? How many of us listen to ourselves, then set that aside and listen to somebody else? So there's there's like it's this whole goldfish bowl of listening in your life. And this call today is what's your authenticity? Are you listening consciously or unconsciously to your life, to people, to business, to yourself? And there are so many layers. What's your thought, Lee? Yeah, loads there, Paul. And I love a, a I two love two hour one. I love when we introduced it. I say, what's your thoughts? And you can see instantly. And use use what, and I'm going to share this with our, our viewers. Do you see what Lee did there? He stopped, allowed himself to go into his own listening. And into the listen of his listening. He didn't go with his first thought. His first thought was just the book title. The second thought was the chapter title. The third thought, now this is the information. So Lee's going to come in with that information. That's a process to listen to yourself, Lee, do you think? I think so. It's also, bear in mind, I'm listening to answer something from the external world. Wow. So, I've, you, so I've had something external come in because I think there's a few variables to it. There's the drama and trauma listening to oneself. There's, and to me, that's noise. That's like... Listen, I don't see, I don't know. In the old days, you'd listen. I used to listen to the radio, Radio Luxembourg. I don't know if you remember it. Yeah. And sometimes the signal would change, and you just have to turn the dial a fraction. If you went too far, you lost it. If you went, oh, there it is. And it'd be fine there for about 10 minutes, and then it'd move, and you'd change it again. Whether it was the air pressure or whatever that changed it. And I think it's a bit like that when you're listening with you, to yourself. You've got to tune into the right radio station. So if you're on the radio, internal radio station of drama um, and you might be fighting to stay off of that radio station because external's triggering you, bear in mind, I would say triggers or reactions or responses, yeah, many would call them that. I would say that if you're actually listening, that's your awareness level. Wherever you react to respond to and also how you react or respond is your strategy level to your awareness level so when we get triggered and that's external coming in so like there's you and i 
And whether it's a virtual world or real world, there's your skin in, that's your virtual world. Mm -hmm. There's my skin in, that's my virtual world. And between us is the real world. The real world is things we can see and reference. We can have different perspectives on the real world. Well, I don't see it that way. I don't think about it that way. But it's what we're listening for, Paul. Yeah. What I mean by that is, like, is sometimes we don't know what we don't know. So there's no point listening to ourselves then. But being self aware, as in aware enough of what you want. And it reminds me of a talk I did years ago for, I think it was, I think it was the No Name Club. And, um, they have like these summer camps or these get togethers of people that young people that want to be um, entrepreneurs or mm. innovators and different things like that. So young being 16, 17, 18. Um, and I was asked to be on the panel. This going back probably, I don't know, six or seven years ago. And I was on the panel with the CEO of the No Name Club, which is quite a big thing in, in Ireland and a couple of politicians and everybody's talking about the future but nobody's talking about how to get to the future yeah. and what a lot of people don't realize is the future does not really exist all that really exists is our perception that it does exist mm -hmm. so when we start to listen to ourselves that we start to have these conversations with somebody else to I suppose, architect that future, then we're architecting it by what we know or what we don't know or what we think we can do or what we hope we can do. Where I realised something, because I used to be this lecture, as you know, so I realised something at a very young age that took a lot of pressure off for me. It wasn't something that was taught to me. I just got fed up of listening to myself that I was an idiot. Mm -hmm. And it was very easy to prove because, I mean, if I was asked to stand up in class and read from a book, I, I now I could read it in my head. I thought very well, but as soon as I put some words on it, it didn't sound too good when it came out there. There was a lot of ums and buts and there was words that you never heard of. And the teacher would go, start back at the line again. She thought I was taking the mickey. Uh, but I was reading what I thought was there, what I thought was there. Yeah. But it wasn't there. It was there. More than my head was putting things together. So I realized at a very young age that what I saw wasn't necessarily true. Okay. Yeah. And so I, when I read, and I still have trouble with it now, and I, is I have to put work out what the words are sometimes, what come before or what come after. How is that relevant to this? Well, I think people are doing that with their dreams or aspirations. Oh. When I'd done the talk for the No Name Club, I, I think based on the feedback I got from the young people there, I gave them a paradigm shift. I said, me, I said, I realised that I was never going to learn everything, even if I could read or write properly, and I wasn't dyslexia. I didn't have dyslexia. I knew I wasn't going to read or write, and I wasn't going to be able to learn everything in the world. So then no matter how much, how hard I tried, <clears throat> even if I could read a book in a second, yeah. I mean, by the time I got to the end of my life, I still wouldn't learn everything that was in the world to learn. Mm -hmm. So I learned to strategize and structure what it because it learning for me was hard, as in the normal conventional learning. Yeah. I had to strategize what I was going to learn. Yeah. So then I also then had to work out the quickest way of getting that data. And then, because half the problem with learning is you read a good book, you think it's a good book, and then you read another book, and you think, oh, and then you get a different perspective. Now, sometimes you can hybrid the two, and sometimes one deletes the other. Yeah. Yeah, and I didn't want this yin or yang data. I wanted pure data. I wanted the golden thread that ran through everything, that made everything so. So the way I worked that out to solve the problem and to speed up time was I looked for experts. How did I know they're experts? It didn't mean because they've written books that are experts. Could you see it in the real world? Did they have some form of proof that they were good at what they do? Yeah. 
Now, some people are very good at one particular thing and they get paid really well for it. Nothing wrong with that. But if they've got opinions on 50 other things, then that's just their opinion. Opinions ain't worth nothing. Opinions does not put money in the bank. And all an opinion is an, ass is an assessment of the data. And if, if you haven't got all the data, you can only give your opinion to that level. So even if you're listening to yourself, if you haven't got the data, so to take it to a higher level, it's who's, whose counsel are you seeking? Wow. Because it's like, and to, to know that, it's easy. It, I think it's quite easy. See, the paradigm shift is this. Too many people are doing stuff in the now to get to the future they want. Rather than designing the future they want and in the now, aligning what they do to get to that future. So, for example, what I said to these young people, I said the challenge is with life, you'll get caught up in circumstances. And I said you'll have very educated and very clever people and very caring people telling you what you need to do. Yeah. From their perspective. Now, first of all, have they done it? Or is it just aspirations of what they wish they would have done? You've got to hear that one. See, too many adults are telling you what they think their mistake was. Well, if I have my day over again, I'll do this. Now, and they've got no experience in this, because if they did, they'd be doing it. Mm -hmm. They're just giving an opinion. They're just giving like, like this form of medicated dream reality. And that's no good to anybody. And especially if we have respect for that person, we can run off on that data listening to them, and we take that data inside, and now that becomes the radio station we listen to, and because it's inside, we're now listening to ourselves when it came oh, from outside in the first place. Wait, wait, that's massive. That is massive. Wow. Then we're adjusting how we are listening according to somebody else's opinion of what they think about their life. They, and this, this comes in the fact that now... We're unconsciously listening because we've been told what we need to hear, which effectively then creates a negative strategy in what we should be learning in life or learning in order to be successful, whether it's life, business, or anything. Yeah, and yeah, and near enough, near enough. And then I'm not correcting you. Please. But just, just flip it slightly because this is where I think, I think this is a superpower. I think this. Yeah, I don't know it, but I have taught it to other people, and some of which you know, and it becomes a superpower in their life. Because it's a bit like and it yeah, easiest way is this. See, if you were a time traveller, yeah, if you were like and hopefully one day it would be, because I'd love a time machine, absolutely brilliant. <laughs> yeah. But let's say, yeah, that you are a time traveller. Okay. Now you can go to the past, and you can go back and change all the things you wish to come and have a different present. Now, whether you're a time traveller or not, you can't go back and get younger. You can go back and see your younger self, and you might be able to give your younger self wisdom, but then if you change anything with your younger self, in the present moment, everything, everything will change. Mm -hmm. And everything you change in the past, you don't know the consequences of it in your present. Right, so let's say, because that's the thing, you could go back and you say, well, that's all right, if we go back, we get rid of Hitler and there'd be no World War II, yeah? And you could say that. But if there was no World War II, there'd be no Europe, mm -hmm. as in the, uh, the European Parliament, because the European Parliament, common market came about as trying to solve problems from too many people listening to the wrong radio station. Wow. So, so the easiest way is, if you are a time traveller, we're only going to travel to the future. Wow. Yeah, because, yeah, and we go from the present with the wisdom we got to the future. But when we're in the future, we're going to a future, and we, when we get there, it's a blank canvas. So when we get into the future, we can get there and see what's happening, but none of it's happened yet, so the future don't really exist. Yeah. You time travel to the future, and you sort of think, well, how did the future get created? Because then you have to go back from the future to certain parts in the past before your present. So you're at this, this is the present moment, yeah, 2023. We jump forward to 2043, 20 years. 
when we get there, nothing's happened between 2023 and 2043 because it hasn't happened yet. Yeah. You with me? Yeah, yeah. So when we when we get to 2043, really, it's a blank canvas. But then if we want to know what happened there, we have to come back from 2043 to 2033 to be able to be in the past or the future. Oh, wow. Because exactly. our future becomes the present. So that's a bit complicated, but hear it this way. We jump forward, let's say, whatever age we're at. Then the people I was talking to, I said to them, what I'd like you to do is go 20 years in your future, 30 years in your future. What house, and you've got to hear the question here, what type of house do you want to be living in? Is, or is it bedrooms? Has it got five bedrooms? Why? Come back, Lee, we, lo we lost connection. Lee, but after the All type right. of house, we lost That's something right. there. We got some. We got yeah. some major weather going on. Go on. That's right. What type of house do you want to be living in? Yeah, or apartment or flat. Now, let's say do you want to live in a two bedroom house, a one bedroom house, a five bedroom house. Why? Because the amount of bedrooms will tell you how big your family is, most likely. Mm -hmm. Why is that relevant? Because you've got to architect your future. You've got to design it. What house? What and where is the house? What area is it in? What car do you drive? What food do you eat? What holidays do you go on? What type of hobbies are you involved in? Do you have family get togethers? Do you have friend get togethers? What's in your bank? How much money is in your bank in this future? Is it just enough? Yeah, or have you got savings? Have you got investments? Do you have a holiday home abroad? What I'd like you to do is go into your future and design your future. Because the future hasn't happened happened yet and design the future but we're going to go forward 20 or 30 years to do it or however many years you want to do it could be three and we're going to design that future and architect it out and decide what house what car where you go where you eat what holidays you go go to what um clothes you're wearing if you've got kids and what 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 are your kids like? Are they happy and healthy? And what clothes are they wearing? What food are they eating? What's all? The reason being is then you come back from the future to the present and you do all the actions of the present to take you to that future. And, and that concept is beautiful. But let's put a let's put a throw a span in the works here. Let's say that, and I wanna I wanna put it in this way. So I'm here and I am propaganda listening let's think about not listening okay, to propaganda yeah. not listening to propaganda i am propaganda listening so that means i'm listening to everything that creates a cause and effect of what might make me feel good but can't what i what is on my side and on my side so propaganda listening i'm going to say is a big chunk of why people assume they're listening correctly they're actually not listening they are unconsciously listening because they are propaganda listeners so I am I am practicing that in my life, so means that my future actually is going to have a propaganda future. It can do, but then it comes back to self autonomy. See, so I suppose Ooh. it comes back to this. Yeah, that's brilliant. Is, and and well, you got to hear it this way: when you have a breath, yeah, and when you have a heartbeat, what use was that heartbeat or that breath if all you were doing was listening to propaganda or thinking a thought or feeling a thing. See, when we have these feelings and when we think these thoughts, is I had a thought. Yeah. When you think a thought, why that thought? Where did it come from? See, so we're either listening in or we're – and you've got to listen to this. We're either the DJ of our own radio station or we're listening into the DJ of somebody else's radio station, yeah. even if it's in your own mind. Because when we're listening to this noise, this chatter, whether it's ours, whether it's just the sum of it, all of our fears and doubts, we have to tune into another radio station. We have to not deny it. We're just in the pattern of the habit or the belief or the opinion or the contagion because everybody else does it. I remember my nan saying to me when I was a kid, you got to listen to that little voice inside you. Wow. Yeah, and I, I didn't know what she meant. Now, I remember it. I was about six or seven years old, and I wow. I thought, well, and she, I said, like, I was like, I said, what little voice? She said, well, surely you have that little voice that tells you, like she said, like, what to do, what not to do. I said, no. She said, oh, you must have. I said, no. 
I said, should I? She said, well, let me granddad come in. And she went, Bill, do you have a little voice inside your head? He said, mine's a big voice. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I said, yeah, now I think I'm doing something wrong on the inside, see? And then uh, I said, well, I ain't got a voice. And I was quite, like, I was only six or seven. I was a little bit sucking me thumb on the inside. Well, what, what, what did I do wrong? Where do I find my voice? Now, bear in mind, I was only a kid. Yeah, I still haven't got that voice. I am the voice. Oh, wow, wow, wow. I am the voice. Now, just listeners, viewers, listen to that golden nugget. I am the voice. I decide. I have to decide. It's my breath, my heartbeat. Wow. Now, I didn't have the noise because I was still looking for this voice. And it seems, that if anything, that my nan done me the biggest favour forever. Because I was looking for something, listening for something. Yeah, and I was like, what type of voice is it, Nan? Is it a, like a voice like your voice? She said, no, it's your own voice sort of thing. Yeah, so, yeah no, I don't have a voice in my head. A voice is something external. Mm -hmm. Noise is something external. I don't have noise in my head. I don't want noise in my head. If I've got noise in my head, somebody's put it there. If I've got confusion, I ain't thought it through. If I've got feelings that are, in a sense, not the best, I can get feelings like stubbing my toe or somebody can call me a name. I'm not worried if anyone calls me a name. Don't bother me. Call me like you like. Doesn't matter to me. Well, I think this is you. Yeah, your thoughts, your private business, nothing to do with me. I appreciate you sharing with me, and I appreciate you telling me what you think of me. Not worried. What you think of me is what you think of me. I don't even think anything of myself because thoughts to me are like snowflakes. They're like leaves on a tree. I much prefer to look at the tree. If you want to individually look at the leaf, what is the overall of all your thoughts? Wow. What tree is it? So there's a story years ago. I was on stage in it, and I'd done a presentation. I had a bit of a trouble with this presentation. I, I was there was a two day event, and I was asked to speak on the the second day, but I was also asked to close. So I, I had two parts. I had to do a bit in the morning, I had to close the event. They had this speaker coming from America, really good guy, and he was opening the event, and they asked me to close it. And he opened it and he also done a, a, like, I don't know, I can't remember now, 45 minute and 90 minute segment. And I had similar to do. I had a segment on the second day and I had to close it about half an hour on the end of the day. And the trouble was with the bloke they brought in from America, a really good guy, was he was, he'd done a really good keynote. I mean, and if it had been 20 years before, I would have thought it was phenomenal. And every word he said, I thought, oh my God, like, I can't do what I do. Everything he said, if I'd done what I did, was I was going to disrespect what he said because he was talking about belief, about believing in yourself. And Yeah, and now a friend of mine, James Martin, was there, very good trainer. He's worked with Tony Robbins and everything like that for about 20 years. And he, he said to me in a break, and he said, do you like me? So I said, yeah, Dave. Uh, I said, well, yeah, James. So he said... Um, I said, yeah, I'm all right. I said, I've just got to say it on my mind. He said, yeah, I thought that. He said, uh, what are you doing tomorrow? I said, if you'd asked me that, I said this morning, I said, I could have told you. I said, now, I said, I can't do what I plan to do tomorrow. Now, it really bothered me because I knew the person that was running the event and I had great respect for the speaker, but the whole audience now has been listening to something that is totally incompatible with what I'm going to do. Wow. So now I'm either coming in on the second day, closing an event or doing my presentation or my, my speech, and I'm going to delete what happened on the first day or leave a conf split the audience. I can't do that, see? That wouldn't be respectful. So I come home when I was, even when I came in the door, Ross said to me, are you okay? And I was fine. I just had this confusion. So I said, yeah, I just got so you got to hear it. got something playing on my mind. Oh, wow. Hmm. It's a bit like that song you can't get out of your head. Yeah. yeah Joe Pesquale, years, years ago, I don't know if you remember Joe Pesquale. He used to live down the road, mate. 
he, he used to say, I know a song that he's, he, he, I saw him live once. He said uh, to the audience, I know a song that'll get on your nerves. Would you like to hear it? Uh, yeah, go on, tell it. I know a song that get on your nerves, get on your nerves, get on your nerves. I know a song that get on your nerves, get on your nerves. You just kept singing the same line. It's because it gets on your nerves. And that's what happens sometimes when this noise gets in your head. It gets on your nerves. And your nerves is physical. Noise is like intellectual. So Ros knew by me, because I really had a big problem. To me, it was a problem in the outside world. We had a problem in the inside world. If Lee Tullyware showed up, how Lee Tullyware wanted to show up, didn't care about anybody else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would have had a good day. Would have been one of those like a cannonball going through the audience. But I couldn't do that. So as I've walked in the door and Ross has gone, you're right now, Livy's come up to me with this crayon drawing here in school. And she said, and I realize she's 12 now. So she would have been, I don't know, five, four, five. Daddy, daddy, look, look. look. And it being presence, it's amazing how you can take noise out. You read very quick. Now, we all know what kids' drawings are like, yeah? Yeah. Scribble all over the place, yeah? So it's a bit noisy, really. They think it's a picture, but it ain't. It's very abstract. And she showed it to me, and she said, and she wants my opinion, see? Because she wants to know that she's been a good girl. She wants to know it's a good drawing. And that's where I get a chance as a father to install confidence or love or now, I can be caught up in my head, but I've still got to be present. So Livy showed me this drawing. And obviously, there's that bit where you sort of look at it and go, oh, yeah, yeah, it's good. You can do that. See, but that isn't really authentic. So you've got to come off the noise for a minute and be present because you're in your internal world, messaging out to the real world to go into her internal world. And those little bits create the radio station she listens to in her future. Yeah. So I've looked at it. And now I've got to look at it. I can't go, oh, yeah, yeah, it's lovely, it's lovely. No, because, yeah, oh, thank you, Daddy. Yeah, it's clever girl, isn't she, Ross? Yeah, and she goes off, right, anyway. Now the, now the annoyance is out of the way. If I do that, that ain't no good for her. So I've got to be present, even though she's interrupting our conversation. Mm-hmm. So she's giving me this. I said, let's have a look, darling. And I look around. I said, oh, really good, really good. I said, who's that there? She said, that's you. I said, oh, brilliant. And is that? She said, that's mummy. I said, I love the way I said that. I said, um, the way you've used colour, love. I said, it's really good. I said, I love the green hill. She said, oh, here's a hill. Yeah, it, it, I was trying to work out this abstract bit. And I said, uh, I love the way you've um, changed the colour of the sky. You know, like the sun was blue and the, and the sky was yellow. Yeah. Yeah. I said, I love the way you changed the colour of the sky. I said, very imaginative. He said, thank you, Daddy. And I said, I love the colour of the sun. It's blue. She went, yeah, I thought it'd look better blue. Than, yeah. So I thought I'd do the, the sun blue and the, the sky yellow. I said, yeah, brilliant, love. Well done. Yeah. And because she, now she's drawing the picture the way she wants to draw it. Yeah. It's only a kid, see. But anyway, I said to her, I said, I've had a very hard day, Livy, really, in my head. I said, can I borrow that picture for my presentation tomorrow? She went, really? So I said, yeah. I said, but I'm going to have to get Mum to laminate it. She went, yeah. I said, are you sure? I said, I want to show this picture to about 500 people. She went, yeah. I said, it's that good, love. I said, you've really solved the problem for me. So she went, right, right, yeah. And she's skipping through the house. I said, oh, and she went running off with the picture. I said, oh, no, bring that picture back. I need that picture. And she's giving it to me. And I said to Ros, can you laminate that, that for me now? And she's going, I can do you another picture if you want that. I said, no, that picture's perfect. So my presentation on this screen was the picture of my kid's picture. And I've sort of told them this story. And I've said to them that I was very honest. Uh, Fenton, I think his name was. I said, Fenton, when he opened yesterday about belief, I said, now, I said, for anyone that knows me, I don't do belief. I said, to me, beliefs are lies. I said, because if they were the truth, they'd be called the truth. But in fact, they're called belief. And if you look very carefully in the word belief or believe, you'll see the lie, L-I-E, that lies within. In 
my world, my internal world, from my skin in, beliefs are barriers to the truth, beliefs are the consequences of us not knowing the truth. Mm -hmm. So we opened on belief yesterday. That's so what I'd like to do is close on truth. So we've had a transition over two days from belief to truth. Everything that's been said on these days have been here to surf here. Because the content's been such to a high standard, I said it, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. So what I'm looking to do is not discredit anybody, put the icing on the cake, put the candles in, I said, and really lie up and have the party poppers and the streamers. I said, and, but I didn't know how to do that until I walked up, got home last night. I said, my daughter showed me this image. Let me show it to you. So what I'd like you to do is have a look at it. Okay, I lost you again. There you are. Yeah. I lost you. That's it. I said, I'd like to show you this drawing. Yeah. And I think, yeah, it'll cut back now. Yeah. And I showed him the drawing and I said, Do you see the colour of the sky? I said, Now your brain might tell you it should be the sky should be blue, not yellow. Yeah. And the sun should be yellow, not blue. What I'd like you to do in your own life is look at what colour sky you are. Now, some of you may be in a really dark sky. And you may have been under that dark sky for a long, long time. What I'd like you to do today is look into your future and see a brighter sky. Bear in mind, it is your future. You breathe for you. You think for you. You decide for you. And these feelings or these images and thoughts that you listen in on, that take away your autonomy, that take away who you are, or the quality that you can deliver to the outside world, all I'd like you to do is change your sky because I can assure you when you're under a brighter, cleaner, warmer sky, it lies much easier. Wow. It's not something you have to learn. It's just something you have to do is going to the future. Yeah. So while you're in the future, changing the colour of your sky, when's the sky going to change? It don't always change from like blue to yellow or yellow to blue or dark, black to white and, and, and blue. I said, sometimes there's a transition. I said, when we've been in the storms of life or just in a few showers, mm -hmm. we don't like it. And it can put make us listen to the wrong radio station. Wow. Yeah. So what I'd like you to do, yeah, I've got, and I had this bag. I said, I've got one for every one of the audience. I said, there's a piece of paper and a box of crayons. Pass them round. And I'd have I said, all I want you to do to do is draw a drawing and I want you when you finish a drawing to show the person next to you and I want you to show the person behind you I want you to show everybody the colour of your sky in the future mm -hmm. we don't need to know the colour of your sky in the present or the past just to show us the colour of your sky make it accountable make it to another human scene show yours I said and you'll see there's a synergy we all want the same like we might have a different colour sky but we do want it to be warm and we do want it to be nice and bright. Mm -hmm. So I don't draw that. And I, I said, now, do you get the idea? So the next time when you hear the noise and you're overthinking, I said, all you've got to do is think about what colour sky you want. I said, I'm going to leave you with one thing there. I said, those of you who don't know me, I said, my children, I've got four kids that fight for their country in international karate. I said, my son Isaac was trying out for the international team. And he was trying out on a Sunday, and this is the Thursday. I said, I was walking through to the kitchen to get a cup of coffee, and he was laying on the couch. He was only about 14 or 15 at the time. I said, are you all right, mate? Bear in mind, this, this life's really good. This sky should be really blue and bright. Yeah. Is he all right, mate? I expected him to go, yeah, Dad. Yeah, he didn't sound like that at all. He went, oh, you're all right. I said, what's up? Yeah, nothing. So I never gave it any noise at all in my head. I went and made myself a coffee. But as a dad, I've got to be responsible for what colour sky he has, see? Mm -hmm. And what colour sky he stays under most of the time. So I'm trying to work out, is it something in his past? Now, I'm lucky because I'm his dad and I was there when he drew his first breath. I know most of his past, see? So I thought, yeah, there's nothing in his past. So what's in his future that he's worried or concerned or doubtful about? So, because I don't think it's 
his past. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's his present. His present's really safe. So when I come back from my coffee, I said, um, Isaac, I said, um, how do you think you'll get on on Sunday? Sunday was the day he was doing the tryouts. He went, well, they won't pick me, will they? Oh, right. The radio station of doom and gloom when I'm not wow. worthy. Yeah. yeah. So now I'm thinking, right, what do I say to that? So I said, uh, I'll put my coffee on the side and put it on the radio. I said, follow me. And I walked him out into my back garden. And he's laying on the couch, so to get him off the couch, that took a few. Oh, I'm all right, Dad. I said, no, come on. No, I said, no. I said, I'm not asking, I'm telling. All right. <laughs> yeah, and I've got the shoulder down walk like the, the, <laughs> Anderson, the Neanderthal walk. Yeah, we walked <laughs> out of the garden. I said, here, look at this. I said, you see those three trees? And this, I'm telling this story at this event. I said, you see those three trees? He said, yeah. I said, there's one big tree, there's one medium tree, and there's one smaller tree. I said, those three trees, I was there. I said, they were planted when I was a kid. I said, they were all the same size, same variety, planted in the same ground in the same garden. I said, how come one's big, one's medium, one's small? He said, well, I don't know. I said, well, look at the environment. What does the environment tell you? He said, well, that, that. Big tree, he said, um, he said, he said, it, the sky's open to it. He said, it gets plenty of sunlight. I said, yeah. I said, what about the medium tree there? He said, well, that medium tree is overshadowed by the big tree and overshadowed by the other big tree over there. So I said, yeah, I'd agree with you. I said, the small tree, he said, well, the small tree is overshadowed by them all. I said, but when they were growing, what stunted the small trees? growth because the other two trees beside it would have been the same height if he said that big tree over there I said so why is the big tree the big tree he said because he said it's getting more sky I said the medium tree he said it's getting less sky I said the small tree he said it's got very little sky at all he said it's in the shadows so I said yeah so the thing you got to learn son I said most people spend their life in the shadows of life wow yeah they're like secret ninjas in their own life in the dark, in the shadows. I oh, said, so what I've learned is, mate, you've got to choose the sky you're under and the tree you're going to be. I oh, said, so because you, you, once you choose the tree you're going to be, you know where to plant yourself and you know where to put down roots and you know where to stand tall. And the stronger your roots, the taller you will grow. But if you're living in the shadow of other people's noises or other people's doubts or fears or your own, you'll always be under a dark sky. So let me ask you this, Isaac. I said, as far as I'm concerned, I said, when you go on that mountain on Sunday, I said, you're going to show them who you truly are. And I said, they've never seen a tree like you, my boy. I said, but let me ask you this on the inside. Which tree are you? Which tree do you want to be? I said, the person on that couch, I said, was the small tree under a dark sky. I said, in the shadows of life. I said, which tree do you want to be? He said, I want to be a big tree. I said, well, then put down roots, stay planted, and stay under a bright sky. I said, you'll find you'll have a good future. Wow, Lee, let me come in, because we have come to the end here. We're out of time. This is absolutely amazing. You, we've, you know, we have covered Do You Listen To You Before Listening To Others on so many levels. As usual, it's just been absolutely beautiful. You know, unconscious, conscious listening. We have covered it all. And we are having to pull back, Lee, any, any closing thoughts before we finish up? Yeah, stop listening to the radio station of doom and gloom. It's very simple. Choose the sky you want to be under, yeah, as in the colour of it, and decide, because there's two parts. is your imagination yeah. and there's your thoughts. The thoughts make the decision which ground you're going to be planted in, mm -hmm. and you've got to be planted. What I mean by that is which future you're deciding on. And the noise and all the doubts and fears, they're going to scream that you can't do it. You've got to stand strong under a blue sky. Yeah. And you've got to talk to people to stand strong under that same sky because then you'll get there very quickly. When the feelings come, that's a bit like the wind trying to blow the tree over. But if you've got a firm decision, you're in good ground, and it doesn't matter how hard the wind huffs and puffs, it won't blow your tree down. The feelings that deny you your future aren't real. They're the lies. They're the destructive drama and trauma that's coming at you on the inside, all from 
other people's insides. But the decision to put good roofs down, good blue sky, yellow sky, green sky, any sky you like, as long as it serves you. Yeah. And realise when somebody else tries to blow your tree down, cut your tree down, trim a few branches of you, whatever reason or excuse, don't fight with them. Just tell them what sky you're under and what ground you're in, and you'll find life much simpler. Wow, there we go, man. And we're going to finish up with that. I mean, that wasn't a closing sentence. That was a closing chapter. It was beautiful. And of course, until this time next week, let me wear. Thank you very much. Myself, Paul Reese, hanging on the back end of these things, that's for sure. See you again and bye for now.